In this video, I'm going to show you how to transform your scene from day into night. We'll use layers and masks to isolate the sky before dropping in a starry night sky. And we'll also add this nice inviting glow in the window here and tone everything up so that it has a nighttime feel. So I've got my start image here of the church during the day and I've also got this image of stars. And let's get cracking. The first thing I want to do here is isolate the sky. So I can use an intelligent selection tool for this. I'm going to use the quick selection tool and I can just paint over the sky to quickly select that area and then I can zoom in a little closer. I'm just holding command or control. That's command on a Mac, control on the PC. If we hold that and the space bar, we can drag left or right to zoom in or out. And you can see my selection has gone slightly wrong here. So I can just resize my brush tip here using the left and right square bracket keys and I can hold alt and that allows me to subtract from my initial selection. So I can just sub subtract the top of the uh, church here that's been picked up by accident. And we also want to exclude the cross here from the selection, but rather than do that with the quick selection tool, I'll do it in a second. Let's just finish off over here. So again, I'm going to hold Alt and paint to subtract these areas from my initial selection until I've got a decent selection of all of the buildings here. It doesn't need to be perfect at this stage. We're just trying to get it as good as we can with the quick selection tool. Now with that done, we can take the selection a stage further by using the select and mask command. So we can access that with a little button here. And then I can use this tool here to paint over details like this to increase the area of refinement. And you see how it actually does a very good job of picking up those missing details. We could also try painting over these little ornamental turrets here and perhaps this section of the building here as well. And notice over here, I've also got my radius set to about five just to increase the refinement along the entire edge. And then I want to go down and check invert because I want to isolate the uh, building rather than the sky. So by inverting my selection, I now have a selection of the building instead of the sky. Then I can choose an output down here. I want to set this to output to layer mask and then hit OK. If I bring up my layers panel now by going to window layers you can see how we now have our layer here with the mask attached to it and anywhere in black is going to be hidden. So if we like at this stage we can fine tune the layer mask here if we zoom in a little closer I can see in this uh, distant tower here some of these areas are missing so what I want to do is highlight that mask thumbnail then I can grab the brush tool I can set my foreground color to white down here which allows me to reveal parts of the layer and then I can just paint to tidy up any missing areas until my layer mask is absolutely perfect and that's much better now I think the street here is looking a little bit too busy for a nighttime scene. So what I'm going to do is remove the people here. Let's just click the new layer icon here in the layers panel. And I'm going to grab the spot healing brush tool from the tools panel over here. And I want to make sure I have sample all layers checked up here in the options. Then let's zoom into the people down here and I can just paint over them using the spot healing brush tool. And hopefully the tool does a pretty decent job of getting rid of these people here. We might need to just tidy things up in a second but we'll just go over very quickly with the tool. You can see sometimes it does slip up but we can just try running over the areas once or twice until we get a nice clean area of street over here. So I'm just going to go over quite roughly with the spot healing brush tool and you can see there are a few rough patches but we can tidy those up in a second. Let's just try removing these ladies here and see how the tool gets on with this quite difficult background of steps here and that's not very good but um, I'm sure we can tidy it, uh, tidy it up in a second let's just remove this lady here and see how we're looking now I can hit S to switch to the clone tool again I want to set it to sample all layers and that's just a warning telling me I need, I need to hold Alt to sample a clear area near the area I want to remove. So I can hold Alt and click on this area here and then just paint to kind of extend these little details here. So I'm just kind of 
trying to rebuild the street here around some of the messy patches created by the spot healing brush tool. And of course, I'm doing this quite quickly. You can be a bit more precise about this. And again, I'll just try and extend these steps along here like this. I mean, we don't need to be too precise about this because these are quite distant elements in our scene, but we do want to make sure that it kind of all makes sense from a visual point of view. And I'll just fix this little area here and I think we'll move on. So you can just go to town with the spot healing brush tool and the clone tool until your scene looks right. Now I think we're ready to drop in our starry sky. So I'm going to go to the other image here of the stars and then I'm going to grab the move tool from the tools panel over here and I can just click and drag the star image up to the tab of my main image and then down and in and then release the mouse button to copy that image over. And we want to drag it to the bottom of the layer stack here just so that it sits beneath the church layer and that way of course the stars will appear behind the buildings like this. We can just tweak the positioning. We can hit Command or Control and T to resize by dragging the bounding box if needs be, but I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now I think we need to change these warm tones on the church here to something much cooler and more in keeping with our nighttime sky. So I'm going to highlight the top layer, then click the Create Adjustment layer icon here in the, the uh, layers panel, and we'll choose Color Balance. And I'm going to push the tones here towards blue and towards cyan. And we can experiment with the mid-tones here and then go to the highlights if we like and again just tweak the settings here until we get the right mix of colours. I'm only really looking at how this is affecting the building here. I'm not interested in the sky because I'm going to isolate my adjustment in a second. So bring that to about there I think. And then what I'll do is hold Alt and drag the layer mask thumbnail from the church layer here across to my adjustment layer. So I'm going to hold Alt and drag that layer mask thumbnail up to that top layer to copy the uh, layer mask over. And that will isolate the adjustment so that it only affects the church. And if I toggle that off and on, you can see the effect that has. And uh, looking at it now, it doesn't look quite right. So I'm going to double click the uh, thumbnail there to bring me back into the settings and then just try tweaking things a little bit. Let's go into the shadows and perhaps adjust the blues. I think there's too much blue in the shadows there. Also there's perhaps too much green so I'm going to push it towards magenta and that's looking much better. Next we're going to add a nice warm glow in the windows here. So to do this first of all we need to select them and we can use any selection tool we like for this. So I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool and I can just click to make an angular selection like this and then double click to close it off. And to add to that initial selection, I need to hold shift and then I can make another selection box like this. So I just need to select all of these little openings here. And I'll jump forward to a point where I've done that. So now I've selected all of those little openings I'm going to click the create adjustment layer icon again and let's go for solid color this time and then we just want to choose a nice warm slightly yellowish tone for our glow from the windows here so we can just experiment with colors like this until we get the tone that we're after and I think somewhere around about there is probably right uh, maybe slightly more yellow I'm happy with that, so I'll hit OK. Now, I want to make a slight glow around the edges of the frame here. So I'm going to double click that layer to open up the layer style options. And I'm going to check outer glow. And notice in the settings here, I've got the blend mode set to linear light. And we can adjust the opacity to make the glow stronger or weaker. And I've chosen a nice orange color for the glow. And we can also adjust the size. If we go for a low size, you can see the difference that has on the look of our glow. So I'm just going to go for quite a large size here. So the glow spreads out and I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll hit OK to apply. And let's see how we're looking. So 
Now we've got a nice warm glow in our window here. Now let's say we want to add that same glow to another window, perhaps the tower in the distance here. We can actually just paint on our layer masks to uh, add that same glow effect to different areas of our image. So I just need to highlight that mask thumbnail there by clicking on it. Then I can grab the brush tool from the tools panel over here and I want to make sure my color is set to white which allows me to reveal parts of my layer here and then I can just click a couple of times and you can see how we can add that same glow effect in these windows here. Let's perhaps add it to these other openings here like this. So you can see how that works. And I think we're nearly there with our effect now. We might want to finish off with a few final tonal adjustments. So I like to do this using the camera raw filter. So I'm going to make a merged copy of all of my layers here using the keyboard shortcut command or control shift alt and E and that will merge a copy of all of the layers below into a single layer at the top of the layer stack here. And then I'm going to take that layer into the camera raw filter by going to filter camera raw filter. Then I can just play with the settings over here to adjust the tones. I might want to lower the saturation a little like this. We could perhaps um, maybe tweak the temperature. Let's cool down the tones a little. Maybe just push a tiny bit of magenta in there as well. I could tweak the contrast here. Let's perhaps add a slight vignette. We can use the radial filter for this. So grab that from the toolbar. Just click the minus on exposure a couple of times and then I can hold command or control and double click to add a vignette to the edges of the frame and then just tweak the sliders until it looks right. And back in the basic panel let's perhaps just knock the exposure down a touch and let's hit OK to apply. If I toggle that top layer off and on you can see the difference that makes to the overall feel of the image and that's my finished effect. So there we have it that's how to take your scenes from warm sunlight to moody moonlight.